Hello everybody, this is more of a PSA than a tutorial video really um, about uh, the changes to scripts in version 2.3. 2.3 brought a ton of new changes. We've got this fancy new asset browser, we've got some new editors, some new, entirely new resource types, um, and probably more GML changes fundamentally um, than really the transition from 1.x to 2. We've got some huge changes to GML. Um, and all kinds of things have changed, but one of the things that's really going to catch people out, I think, is the change that has come to scripts and functions. I've made mention this before when I've talked about my videos covering the beta, and, um, and throughout like, my action RPG we've talked about this because we've had to warn people for it coming up, but I wanted to make a video specifically just to point this out. So scripts, um, as we're used to working with them before 2.3, were functions, right? They were custom functions that you would declare. You'd give them a name, um, like in this case, we've got like use item bomb. We write some code in it, and um, in this case, to use a bomb, and uh, and then we could call that from anywhere on our game by writing, you know, use item bomb, open bracket, close bracket, and maybe putting some arguments and so on inside there. Um, now, uh, if you import a project from 2.25, uh, for example, through to 2.3, it'll convert it and it will change all of your scripts um, to suddenly contain this function text at the start here. Because scripts are no longer functions, uh, they are simply, they can simply contain functions, alright? So no longer is use item bomb as it's named here in the script the function. The function is here where it is declared with the function statement. Okay, this means a few things. It means first of all you don't just have to have one script be one function anymore. You can write uh, multiple functions here. Um, another function. I'm going to close bracket and write some script in there. Um, it means you can declare them inside objects as well. And by doing that, by the way, if you declare a function in an object, like in its create event, it becomes local to that object, so other objects can't use it. So it's a good way to like start controlling scope. Um, th th there's quite a whole host of consequences to this and a, a lot of new things it allows. As I already said, this means you can kind of merge uh, scripts together. Like we've got use item bomb here, but I could make like a new script that's like use item functions um, and we could just uh, copy and paste all of these scripts into this one script and delete all these other three and then just be left with one fun uh, one script that contains all of our uh, use item functions, okay? I thought I'd copy the same one twice there. I was like, is that two of bomb? No, that's just one bomb, one of bow, and one of the hook shot there as well. And you can, oh, they've got the folding built in there as well. So you can just sort of click these uh, to fold and unfold them. You can also press Control U to unfold all, Control M to fold all. Can be quite useful. Now, if you're following an older tutorial and they tell you to make a new script, okay, you can still basically do it exactly the same way. So right click here, you make a script. Um, this is like script 62 and you'll see that we've got function script, uh, function script 62 here as well. But if I just name this as I create it, my core function, um, you can see this function name got updated as well. Um, it can be a bit sketchy and it can be easy to get those unlinked and then they become differently named and you have to sort of make sure that they stay the same, but if you name it as you create it, um, it'll keep this the same. Um, there's also a link here that explains basically everything I'm telling you here with even more information and more technical detail. Um, so if you're interested in the new scoping and stuff of this and other things you can do with this, making variables equal functions and methods and so on, um, go check this link out, really is important. Um, but if you're just trying to follow, follow like all the tutorials and all the content, all you need to know is to just leave this stuff uh, alone and just do do whatever the tutorial tells you to do in this space, okay, in where the function has been declared. Because it's no longer the script you're calling, it's the function that you declare within the script that you are calling, okay? So that might then cause you to wonder, well, how does script execute work, okay? Um, and the answer is it still works in exactly the same way. Um, but instead of calling a script, it's now calling a function. So I would write, so say this is actually differently named, um, or rather let's use um, 
use item functions as an example. So let me just delete this. Come back to the this thing. So I can write script execute. Um, I, I can actually, I think, still write use item functions in here and it will try and like run this. It wouldn't do anything because it's just a bunch of functions declared in here. <laughs> so like this code doesn't really work as a function, doesn't do anything, it just declares some functions. Um, but I think you can still do that. Um, but generally the main use of it is still just to um, execute functions as declared in scripts. Um, so I could write script execute use item hook. Um, I could also like do write variable func equals uh, use item bow and script execute func, right? And that will execute uh, that particular function. Okay, it has to be a function declared in a script because only functions within script get an ID, as it were, or a script ID, right, or a function ID, whatever you want to call it, um, that works with this. Um, so by setting this to this, that becomes the ID of that function. Whereas functions you declare like as methods and um, variables and objects and stuff like that um, don't get that. They have to be within scripts, okay? Which, you know, that the, the script on script execute, I guess, is the clue there, right? It, has, it only works with functions that are declared in scripts. But otherwise, functions exactly how you're used to using it. Um, you don't really have to worry about much there. Uh, the other big new change here is that arguments are different, so you can write um, your own set of arguments in here, like um, use item hook potato. Um, eventually when it catches up that will turn uh, yellowy colored, yeah, because it's like a local variable. And then we can write potato in here and, and do stuff with that function, okay? Um, that's the better way to do it now, potato and tomato. <laughs> and uh, and use those as your arguments because then when you call use item uh, use item hook from somewhere else in your game um, it has an update save wait for that to update uh, you can see down here uh, it's come in and actually included both those at the bottom here so it re nicely reminds you with the autocomplete and stuff what um, what arguments you actually have to provide and then you can use those as your arguments within the function. But you might be thinking, oh, well, what about all my scripts and stuff that use argument zero and argument one and so on and tutorials? They all still work. They still work exactly the same way. Um, those will just refer to whatever is in those two arguments here. But even if we don't include those, and I wrote wrote something like that, um, I don't know, potato equals argument zero, tomato equals argument one. Um, and then dude function, uh, sorry, I did use Use, I can't type use, just wanted a capital U. Use item hook, open bracket uh, 12 and 15. Uh, potato will come out as 12, tomato will come out as 15, right? It's it, it still work the exact same way. But the better way to do it is just to name uh, these arguments in here and then just use use those within the function, right? The same goes for all the other argument things. So like uh, argument like as an array, um, argument counts, all still works exactly the same way. They've done, they've put a lot of effort in. The vast majority of things in 2.3, it all just kind of just work as you were doing it before, but there is likely just a slightly better way of doing it now. That's the main, that's the main gist behind 2.3 on the whole. So yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm, most, I'm really only scratching the surface here, like just being able to like group these things together in single scripts is cool. Um, but there's loads of other stuff. I really do recommend going and checking out that link. I'll put it in the description. Um, there's a lot of technical detail, but um, there's there's a lot of really cool new stuff you can do now just because of this. Um, the main thing though I just want people to be aware of is how it works now and to start thinking of scripts as the thing that contains functions rather than being the functions themselves. They can still work, they can still be used as if they were the functions, as I said, just by creating creating a new script. Script 62 creates a function called script 62, um, but it's best to really just change your mindset and the way you're thinking about it. You're not calling script 62 the script anymore, you're calling the function declared within it, okay? And as long as you understand that, um, that will be enough to get you through uh, moving on to version 2.3 and able to use um, old tutorials with 2.3 because you'll be used to just seeing a blank thing here. So anything that you 
Anything you see a person who making a tutorial do inside of here, you now know, just goes inside of here. Okay, and then it'll all just work. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope that made sense. I'm going to have to update a whole lot of my older tutorials to make them a bit better now. Um, but hey, that's work for me, not work for you. <laughs> Hopefully this makes uh, using some of that old stuff uh, a little bit better for you uh, in the time being. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you all next time. Thank you, as always, to all of my amazing Patreon supporters. They're the only reason I can really make any of this work and sustain this as a full-time thing. And I want to give a huge shout-out in particular, and in no particular order, to the following special cool kids. Mike Blankier, Cookie Draggy, Matthew Gardner, Team D, Mr. Oz, Jordan Hake, Dalvor, Vacants, Phil Keen, Kimpo, Andrew Gilbert, Kaiser Ho, Justin Adega, Alex Schenkel, Goose, Troy Mera, Joran Pater, Zach Collett, Figgy, Relentless Rex, Cabbage Pants, Leo, Scott Matthews, Mark Burgess, Sami and the Eye Glow, Rene Dam, Zephyr Flame, Rupinda, Hare, Jason, James L. Anderson, James Siggins, Hyungjin, Bertie T, Daka Dondigo, Robert Churches, Bowser the Dog, and Max M. Thank you all ever so much, and thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.